is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by still unbeaten cruiserweight contender Richard Reactport. Richard, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Just uh, enjoying the win, relaxing today on a Monday, just doing some media work and stuff, just chilling. The opponents are getting tougher on paper, but the fight seems to be getting shorter. What, what's the secret? Um, I think it's just just landing landing the correct shots, I think. <laughs> just Is landing the shot? right shots. Um, you know, preparation. Preparation. You know, preparing um, meticulously. I think that's what's really helping. You finished Fabio Turkey with a body shot on Saturday night at Wembley. Was that something you'd practice specifically for that opponent? Not for that opponent, but I do practice that shot. We do practice that shot a lot, you know. Um, but, you know, it's it's one thing practicing it, but it's another thing actually delivering it. And, you know, the good thing is I'm blessed with, with speed. I'm blessed with power, you know, timing, accuracy. So, you know, we, we threw it, we, we, you know, we just executed it at the, at the, at the right time in the good, good fashion. So, you know, I guess it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing from God. How much of it when you're in the ring and obviously you weren't in there with him for very long, is you noticing where the gaps are, planning to throw that shot? And how much of it is just naturally happening when you're in the pocket because you've drilled it so much? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very natural, you know, like I didn't, I didn't even realise the, 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 obviously I, I knew that I threw, you know, the hook to the body, to the liver, because that's what I was aiming for. But um, it was just the moment there, it was just being in the moment, being focused and seeing the opening, opening and um, the uppercut, I just saw the gap there and I threw it straight away. It was just like bang, bang, straight after it. He made a mistake. I knew he was going to make mistakes in that fight because I've seen him make quite a few in his previous fight. So I just knew just one mistake is all he had to make. And he made that mistake very early in the fight. And it was all, it was over. And I think that's the type of fighter, you know, I'm becoming... I see myself as a elite fighter. Um, I know how to capitalise on, on people's mistakes. And, you know, you might be fighting a great fight, but if you make one mistake against me, Especially with my punch power and my my understanding now of boxing, you you I can knock you out basically. I can knock you out and end the fight. Now, although any fighter would love a crushing knockout victory, and the old saying you don't get paid for overtime, of course, would you have liked to have maybe had a few more rounds just to to I don't know get get the experience in? Yeah, I would have liked to have had some some more rounds. Hundred percent. Is that what you asked, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I would have liked to have got, got some more rounds. Um, just just for the experience. I think I think a lot of the fights will probably start to end like that. You know, they might be ending earlier now. Um, because I'm starting to understand unless the fight is is really um amazing, you know, and, and mix makes, you know, very few mistakes. You know, um I think a lot of the fights will end really, really early like that because now we've we've stepped it up a notch and we're always consistently raising the bar. We want to get better. We want to look better. We want to perform better because that's what the fans want. And um, that's what brings more attention, more money to us. So, you know, that's what we're working on every single day, me and my coach and my team. So, yeah, you can expect that. Now, I mentioned in your coach, you've been with Angel Fernandez for quite a while now, but you had another voice in the corner on Saturday night, Robert Garcia, who's come over from the US. There was only one break between rounds because you finished it in the second. But what was it like having that second voice in the corner? Yeah, it was great. You know, um, just being surrounded by greatness. You know, I, I have this man in my corner who's had how many world champions? And it's it's an honour for him to be in my in my camp, in, in my corner, working with me so in my mind I know you know I can't let my team down you know what I mean I can't let my team down I can't underperform you know and they know what I'm capable of I know what I'm capable of and I have to go and do what I'm, I'm destined to do so it's that just the extra kind of boost like I was excited even when when um, KD from 258 you know he was pretty close to me he told me like yeah we want to do you mind um 
having um, Robert Garcia in your corner who would like to be in your corner and stuff. I was like, what? That, that'll be an honour. That's amazing. Come, let's go. And Angel was a great coach because he doesn't have no, like, pride and, and ego. You know, he's just, he just wants to, he's for the fight completely. He wants to make the best fighters ever. And if it takes another coach coming and, and adding a few things, then come. And that's the difference. I know a lot of coaches are not like that. You know, they got a lot of pride and, you know, ego. They can't see their fight working with other people. It, it hurts them, you know, deep down. But um, having him in my corner, man, it was, it, was, it was an honor. And he said, he gave me a few things. He didn't say too much. He, he's, he's a type of coach where he's very confident in what he's achieved so far, what he says. And everything holds deep meaning. Throw these shots, that shots. If you try to do this, do that, do that. That's it, nice and simple. In the corner, just said a couple things to me. And, um, and yeah, we just got it cracking, you know. But he gave his prediction. He just said, like, from seeing you, you're going to be too much for this guy. I've seen this guy. He's just, you're, just, you're going to be way too much. Will he be uh, part of your camp for the next fight? Hopefully, you know, you know, obviously he came down for Anthony Joshua and, you know, it was an honour for them to, for AJ and, and 258 to offer Frank, um, Robert Garcia to, to come and work with me in the corner. So, you know, obviously, um, you know, his number, his, his costs are probably quite, quite high. But if, he's, <laughs> if, he's, if, if, they're, if they're willing to do some work, so let us work in the future, yeah, hundred percent. That would be great. I'll be. I'd love to like work with him in the future if Angel likes that as well, and they want to continue working together. Because I'm guessing, you know, come the um, um, August when um, AJ comes away with that victory against Usyk, they're gonna probably want that to be consistent. It's not gonna be a thing where we're just gonna come into this camp just for this win. If something is working, you know, you, you don't try to fix it, isn't it? If it's, it's not broken, don't try to fix it. So. You know, I think I guess they're going to continue that relationship, and obviously we're in the same camp. We're all stable mates, so yeah, it just it's going to work like clockwork. I think. What's that done for the kind of atmosphere in the camp? You've been working with AJ or alongside AJ for a while, anyway. But having Robert Garcia come over and working with Angel as well, they seem to be getting on great already. Yeah, I think it's done a lot for the camp, and. It's one thing having a, a good camp and the energy is good and everybody's looking good in the gym. But let's be real, Danny, it's all about results. And what are they going to go and watch and look at? They're going to look at the results. I fought two southpaws in the space of, of maybe three, four months and I knocked them both out, you know, and um, Joshua is going up against a southpaw as well. Some whatever we're doing, we're doing we're, what we're doing. We're doing something right, you know. We might not be doing everything right, but we're definitely doing something right. So AJ will definitely have. I haven't spoken to him yet, but he has to have more confidence, like in what he selected, because we haven't. I haven't even fought a lot of southpaws in my career. That's the truth. But we're still knocking them out and knocking out southpaws with amazing, you know, um, 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 CVs. You know, they have. They have fought loads of fights, like Fabio Church. I don't think a lot of people know, but he went to the Youth Olympics. He's had his amateur record is he's had hundred he's had over hundred fights, and you're talking to somebody like myself in in my whole career in total. I've probably had about three three fights, including my professional career. I'm like I haven't had no fights. You know what I mean? I'm learning on the job. You know, like I I I say so. You know, but we're getting the job done. You know, in a good fashion. So. 100%, he's definitely going to take something from it. And, um, you know, he's, it's going to help him. What, what can you tell AJ about the secret to knocking out southpaws? It's obviously what he hopefully needs to do. Well, AJ, you know, we, 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 we discuss about this a lot because, you know, when I was in camp for, um, for Dion, you know, he's in camp as well for, for U6. So sometimes we send each other messages on, on southpaws and stuff like and. I could tell, like, with certain, with certain things, it's crazy because it's like, I'll be studying the Southpaws and he'll be studying at the same time, at certain times of the day. It's so weird. And then we'll be talking and, and I just, we just, I, you know, something just clicked. You know, there's, there's, for fighters like us that are strong and naturally blessed, 
you know, we, we got footwork, we, we got, you know, athleticism, we, we can punch hard. Um, there's, if we, if we take the right steps and uh, move, you know, move in the right ways, we should be able to knock out these southpaws, I think, easier than, than orthodox fighters. That's the truth because they're prone to our right hand straights, especially if you can throw a straight right hand, good body shots. It's just, it's quite, it's quite simple. You know, that's, I actually believe it's, it's quite simple. And, um, you know, we, you know, look at the specimen, look, look at the, look at um, Joshua, you know, he looks like an Adonis, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a, he's a serious specimen. You know, it's just, it's just using what you got, you know, like me, tall, long range, using my gifts, you know, um, and, and being intelligent. So I think there's so many way, ways to, um, to deal with, with this opponent. There's so many different ways, but and then there's some, but at the same time, it's all about like adapting in there because I can tell, I can tell Joshua something, but you know, then Usyk might come out and do come something completely different. That's the reality of things. You know, you have to be adaptable, and you're you're on that level now. We're all trying to get to that level and box at the level. Some fighters you might think they're going to try something, or they're going to come in the ring and box a certain type of way, but then they just come and do something else, and you're like. Oh my gosh, I, I wasn't prepared for this. You know what I mean? That's that's fine for you. So I just I tell them, listen, it's 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 I tell them, I tell most people it's it's a fight. You know, find a way. You're you're in a fight, find find a way. Simple. When are we likely to see you back out? I know the belt seems to be tied up at least for a little while, but when will we see you back in the ring? So I want to I want to get back in the ring ring for like um September or something like that. You know, I've I've had quite a few fights in 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 the space of nine nine months, but I want to end the year with like about at least five fights. I'm aiming for six. I'm aiming for six, but five fights. You know, I was out for a period of time, and I feel with me, and I said this, you know, when I first came on, when I when I first had my my fight off the layoff after the layoff, I said I need activity. Because with activity, I, I get better and better. I look better and better. I want to see me reach my full potential. I just need to be active. And um, I'm, I think people are starting to see it now because I'm getting more comfortable, more relaxed, and um, executing my, my, um, my, my strategies quite, quite um, decently. Looking slightly longer term, you've got the champions out there. Is there any one in particular that you'd like to get in the ring first? Sorry, can you say that again? Then? Yeah, sure. I said you've got the champions out there, the different belt holders. Is there any one of them in particular you'd like to get in the ring first? Danny, could you say that again? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's cutting out a little bit, isn't it? Um, I just said uh, the belt holders out there, the champions, which one would you most like to face first? I think um, Ben Shalom is trying to work on Maccabi. Um you know, I, li I like the WBC, but um, we're, we're just kind of seeing. But I don't mind any of them, to be honest. Like, I just, but I'm just going to wait for my team and see what they can do. If they can't get Makabu, then we'll see what else is down the pipeline, what, whatever makes sense. I haven't sat down with my team yet because it's, it's just so um, early. It's really early doors, but um, you're, you're getting to speak to me before I'm even speaking to them. <laughs> but I'm going to speak to them probably probably tomorrow and see what, see what they're saying. But um, yeah, well, I just want to sort things out and get back in there ASAP and um, keep the momentum going. Momentum is very important in the sport. And it's, it's, it's such a shame that not, not a lot of fighters are that active, especially when they're really talented. I feel like um, I, wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even call myself a boxer. If, I was a, if I'm not boxing more than twice a year, you know, uh, I, I'm. I'm not going to. I'm. I'm. I'm going to be. I'm not going to be comfortable with saying that yeah, I'm a professional boxer. You know what I mean? Because I think yeah, you need to be active. You need to be active, man. At least three fights. So the four champions at the moment. So you've got Maris Breedis, Lawrence Akoli, uh, Ilunga Makabu, and Arsene Gunamarian. How would you rate them currently? Yeah. One to four. One to four. Um... <laughs> Gulamarian, 
Gulamarian and um, what's his name? Um, Maccabi. I think they're going to be three and four. And I'll probably say Gulamarian is probably four because he's just not even active. This guy doesn't even fight. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't fought since probably 2019 or 2020. And he's still champion. I don't even know how the, you know, how he even works in the WBA. It's mad. <laughs> it's madness, man. But apparently, I think he's got another fight coming up or something like that. We had another fight. But look, I think he's probably four because he's just not active. Makabu third, um, Akoli um, um, second, and, and um, Maris Breedis first because of his experience. And plus, he's been, you know, he's been a world champion a few times. You know what I mean? He won a lot of titles and his experience. How important is it to you to ultimately become undisputed at Cruiserweight? Uh, that's, that's very important. That's, that's my goal. You know, I, I don't want I'm to... I'm a type of guy where, you know, if I set myself a goal, I have to achieve it. And most things that I, I do say come to pass. I don't want to be in this sport and not achieve what I set out to achieve. I'm going to do everything to do that. And to be honest... Most things that I do set my mind on, I do achieve, you know, and I've, I've come to realise that now. You know, most things that I, I wanted to do in my life, i always just done it. So w- once I do that, then I think I'll be, I'll be satisfied. And um, I think that would definitely happen. And you've been with Sky Sports and Boxer for a little while now. What, how would you kind of grade it to this stage? How, how have they done with you and how have you got on with them? With Boxer and, and Sky Sports? Yeah, because you haven't always liked the way you've been treated, perhaps, in the past by some of the elements in boxing. How has this relationship been so far? Uh, this, been, this has been great. You know, I didn't have no issues with, um, with Matchroom and stuff. You know, I think um, I had a great relationship with Eddie and, uh, and uh, was it Frank Smith. You know, I still have a nice relationship with Frank, Frank Smith as well. He's a lovely person. Um, it was just more... Business wise, I was, I was I was mismanaged, and I needed to get a hold of my career. I needed to take control of my career, and once I did that, everything changed. Everything changed, and and you know people can say what they want, but you know just you 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 Danny can analyze how things were going before to how things are going now, and you can tell me you can be honest and tell me if things are are, are much better now. Because I believe they're flipping 10 times better. You know, they're 10 times better now. And uh, I'm still the same old person. I'm still ambitious before. I'm still training. You know, so, um, you know, and plus, you know, Sky Sports, Boxer, they, they've, they've promised me things and they've delivered on everything. They've d- delivered on everything. They said they're going to keep me active. They said they'll give me the fights. They said they'll give me money. You know, everything that I requested. They've given me everything, so I have. I'm I'm really happy. I'm really happy, and um, we're building together. It was um, it was a brand new venture, and it's funny because initially people didn't really have the belief in in the in the in Sky Sports. They thought you know they're going down under, but now the way things have changed, you know, it's they. I, I bet they probably weren't like they didn't realize you know that they they really are the number one broadcasters and. You know, they can build, they, they're a machine. That's the truth, they're a machine. And now everybody's coming over. Everybody wants to get back on board now. Everybody wants to get back on board on, on the sky the sky boat. But um, unfortunately for them, um, things have changed. The sky, sky are not desperate for people no more. They've built something and, and they, then they're working with, with certain fighters. So now it's, it's more difficult to, to try to get get your slot, if you know what I mean, get a slot on the on the on the train. And talking of that slot, you've been featured very prominently. You've been main eventing all the shows you've been on. Have you noticed an increase in your profile in terms of I don't know social followings, people on the street, whatever it might be? Yeah, a lot. You know, I, I was just I just came from um, Talk Sport. You know, I had people stopping me saying react for shine, like ask for pictures. And, um, you know, just saying well done on my fight. Like, I'm really, really out there. Even in, in like, university, when I'm just doing my stretches, before, you know, it was quite quiet. You get some people that are into boxing that would ask for pictures and stuff. But now I get, like, random, like, students come to me, oh, hey, I'm, like, a big fan, you know, can I get a picture? 
you know, it, everything has changed. Now I don't wanna, don't really want to go to too many places unless, um, you know, what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. You know what I mean? Because uh, um, it could be too hectic. And plus, even like um, when we went to the palace as well, I was absolutely manic. You know, Ben Shalom will tell you about that. You know, but um, but it's good. I love. I love the good thing about me. I, I'm I'm a people's person. I'm a normal individual. You know, I'm not like a diva. I come around and show my face. I like to talk to people. I see myself as a, as a normal person. I'm just, you know, I'm just chasing a dream. You know what I mean? I'm not there yet. I'm on the journey. You can see me. You can follow me now, though. You can follow me on the screens, but I'm still on the journey trying to trying to accomplish my goals. So, you know, I, I like to talk to people, and I find there's a lot of interesting human beings in this world. So this is pretty cool. Brilliant. Well, really, really appreciate your time. Congratulations again on the latest victory. And um, look forward Thanks. to seeing you back in action soon.